Turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter 6. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews was nigh. And when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, whence or where shall we buy bread that these may eat. Where? He asked a question. Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that everyone may take a little. He didn't ask him how much money we need. He said, where are we going to get it? Now there's, um, it's a little tricky here because they're in a desert place. <laughs> yeah, amen. Well, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There's a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? He still, where are we going to buy it? Nobody's answering this question. Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. So there's roughly 20,000 people there, from 20 to 40,000 people. I inquired of, of uh, the Greek scholar Rick Renner about this, and he said it, it's, it's, it's a, a, a given fact in, in the, the deep historical um, followers and students of this, that there was anywhere from 20 to 50,000 people around Jesus all the time, everywhere he went. They couldn't even rest, couldn't even sleep. But Jesus knew what he would do. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples. I want you to get this now. He distributed, he just gave it to them. And they fed the multitude. Glory to God. Distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would when they were filled. He said to the disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. I mentioned something about this this morning. This is increase day, you know. Friday always is. Partner service this morning. If you look this up, and you read it, particularly in, in Mark's gospel, the basket that the little boy had is the Greek word for Little little lunch pail, little, little little small basket. This 
12 baskets, look that up, and it is the same word used for basket that was used in the, in, in, when they let the apostle Paul down in a basket. It's a basket, 12 baskets big enough to put a man in. Wow. Look at that increase. When you put what you have in the hands of Jesus, Listen, be listening. Listen tonight. They weren't listening. Not a one of them got it. Where are we going to buy? I want to turn now to Isaiah the 55th chapter. The first verse. Ho, everyone that's thirsty, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy, eat, yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. How do you do it? With faith. Glory to God. Faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Now then, very, very good friend. Praise God. Andre Robert, pastor of the Great River Church in East London, South Africa. Oh, my, my, my. I was there when we first began to believe God for the Citation 10, which we've been flying now for a number of years. But we had just stepped out in faith and laid hold of that airplane. Gloria and I had sowed our, sown our seed and we believed God for it. And I went to East London and preached there. And uh, <laughs> glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And he sold a million rand, which at that time was worth 800,000 U.S. dollars. He sold a million rand into that citation tent. Cash money, glory to God, believing God for what they, the project in which they had entered. This place was an old, old, dilapidated, run down sheep barn and warehouse and, and where they sheared sheep and stored wool and, and all of that. Really old. And the people that owned it wanted to sell it. And the Lord told Andre exactly what he wanted him to pay for it. And they argued with that. And he said something like, well, now, wait a minute. No, I'm going to pay this and that's it. Well, he said, now, <laughs> Andre, forgive me if I'm messing this up. But he said something, no, sir. That's what the Lord God told me to pay and that's what I'm going to pay. They said, well, okay. Because they, they knew they weren't going to get anything for it anyway. Now, listen to me. In his praying over this, he knew that that place was his. He knew it belonged to the church. Glory to God. 
knew that. So did his wife. Glory to God. I mean, they're strong in faith. He prayed and he lost and he listened. And he heard the Lord say very distinctly, the money is in the floor. And, and he said to me, he said, I, I'm, are we going to find gold under there or something? Well, what? The money's in the floor. And, and he, he, he kept meditating on that and it was so strong. And he said, yes, sir, the money's in the floor. Money is in the floor. I'm going straight ahead. And he didn't have the money to do it. But God kept providing and God kept providing and God kept providing and he kept providing. Money's in the floor. The money's in the floor. Now I want to show you some pictures here. Look at that place. That's what it looked like. All of those posts, huge, 600,000 square feet of building here. You got another picture? Now there we are. And he's telling me, we're going to take out all these posts. It's going to be a dome and it's going to be a, yeah, right. You're going to do that. Look at all the posts in this thing. What, what do you, uh, that um, I, I'm in that first golf cart there with Andre and he's showing me all this, you know, and, and I'm thinking, uh-huh. Yeah, I know you will. Cause man of faith, I didn't doubt him a bit. I, I was, I was thrilled to see all this, but I couldn't see it. It wasn't my project. I couldn't see it. Money's in the floor. The money's in the floor. When they tore this floor up, now give me the next picture. You see all that? That is a very rare. African pine. And it had so much of it had been cut down and all that kind of stuff. It is against the law in South Africa, any place to cut down one of those trees. You, can, you can't do it. And it makes the finest furniture. And it, I mean, every, uh, people would, people would pay any price for it if they can get it again, because it, it, it is it's so, it's so wonderful. It's one of the finest woods, one of the most beautiful woods available to man. Fifty. I said fifty. Fifty flatbed trucks loaded with it. Look at that. Fifty trucks like that. <laughs> I said, Andre, how much did it bring? He said, more than enough. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, now look at this. Look at that. Look at it. And the money in the floor paid for everything, paid for the building, prayed for the renovation, prayed for all the technological equipment that went in there, way more than enough. You think God can take care of your house payment? <laughs> Glory to God. I don't care if you are shut in and can't get outside. Now don't be tearing up your floor unless the Lord tells you there's money in the floor. Praise God. Now I wanted to mention this to you from um, 1 Timothy 6, 17 and Philippians 4, 19. Does God give us things to meet our needs? Of course he does. But that's not the primary purpose. Listen, 
to 1 Timothy 6, 17. Turn over there in your Bibles. I want you to put your eyes on it. 1 Timothy 6, 17. Charge them that are rich in this world. Now, what does the word rich mean? Abundantly supplied. More than enough. And you say rich, everybody thinks about a million dollars. Well, hey, that's wonderful. But that's not what rich actually means. Actually, to be rich in the kingdom of God is to be able to receive from God everything you need, spirit, soul, body, financially, and socially to meet all your needs. That is a wealthy person because you know how to use faith and you know how to receive from God. Amen. So, but look at it. Charge them that are rich in this world, they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but trust in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Glory to God. God is interested in your enjoyment in life as well as meeting your needs, but have more than enough to enjoy life. Glory to God. He's interested in the good life for all of his people and all of the world. Hallelujah. And now, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always having, always having, always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Glory to God. That you, you're supposed to always have it. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Don't ever eat your seed. I mean, you just get down to where you just, hey, oh, you may be down to, to $20. Don't, don't, don't eat that. Don't eat that seed. Sow it. Sow it. If you don't sow it here, sow it right there in your church. Sow it. Praise God, for he's a good God. And he's the El Shaddai more than enough God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, I'll do that. 10th chapter of the book of Mark. Let's turn there quickly. Mark chapter 10. Amazing. Amazing words of Jesus, 17th verse. When he was gone forth in the way, they came running and kneeled to him and asked him, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There's none good but one, that's God. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor your father and your mother. He answered and said unto him, Master, all these things I have observed from my youth. Jesus beholding him loved him and said unto him, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatsoever you have and give to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven. Come, take up the cross and follow me. Now he missed an opportunity here would this not have been an excellent replacement for Judah? Judas? He said it, come and take it up and follow me. Those are the things he said when he called the apostles of the Lamb, but he missed it. He left, he didn't have to leave. 
He was sad at that saying, went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Jesus looked round about and said to his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man, one who trusts in money, to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? That shows you right there, they were not poor men. None, there wasn't a poor man in that bunch. Not one. Amen. <laughs> Jesus looking on them said, with men it's impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution. I'm telling you, when, when it starts to build up and you begin to gain financially, you can just bet on it. Satan's going to try his best to talk you out of it and beat you down and people start talking ugly about you when you get a little money. Just laugh. Ha, ha, ha. Let me tell you something. You can have it. All you have to do is the same thing I've done and Jesus will do the same for you. Amen. And just slough that persecution off because persecution comes for the word's sake. It didn't come to teach you something. Satan is a thief. He came to steal that word. If he can steal it, he can kill you and destroy you. I wanted you to see a hundredfold. A hundredfold. Now, in this time. And right now is a time when you need it. And now is the time to call for the return on your tithing and on your giving and your sowing over the years. Hallelujah. Call for it. You have a right to it. It's laid up in your heavenly account and it belongs to you and no one else but you. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.